We welcome in Kennesaw State's men's basketball coach, Lewis Preston. Welcome. Sam, thank you for having me very much. You know an awful lot about this time of year. When this time of year rolls around, you have some great memories. Have a lot of great memories back here. April 2nd, 2007, being part of the second national championship at Florida. So a lot of great memories. Talk about this time of year and the things that coaches always look for in a team to be successful because we've seen some surprises mm -hmm. in the first couple of days. I think the most important thing that you look for is inside out play. Uh, make sure you're having a dominant big man inside and it comes down to making shots at the end of the day. You have some teams that was going to uh, make some matchup uh, issues for some people, like Missouri was going to be a tough team to match up against. They're gone after the first day. How do you figure things like that? You really don't. You know, I feel bad after watching uh, how Florida just kind of dismantled Norfolk State. I feel bad for Missouri, no doubt in their minds, that they wish they would have had that opportunity today. Indeed. Talk about the opportunity today. Let us get started with an NC State team that just keeps on winning. What is it about this North Carolina State team? Coach? Well, I think one of the things that Mark Godfrey's done a great job of is that he's done it, um, making Lorenzo Brown and then Richard Howe, as well as C.J. Leslie, uh, have really stepped their games up. And, you know, with Lorenzo Brown and Richard Howe being two local products, I think that's been great for them. Against the Georgetown team, I know that's who we had in my bracket. We'll get to that in a minute. But the fact that NC State has done this, we saw them do well in the ACC tournament, and they're still rolling on 65-61, final score in that game today. Michigan State, you like Coach Izzo's squad. They were taking on another great coach, Coach Majerus, St. Louis today. Absolutely. I think uh, one of the things about Coach Izzo that a lot of people fail to realize is that every single player that stayed four years for him has had a chance to experience the Final Four. With Draymond Green as their leader, you know, I have, one, I have them as one of the two finalists here for the national championship. Yeah, I got to like them in my bracket too, but like I said, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. 65-61 final, Spartans are into the Sweet 16. All right, a team you're very familiar with now, the Florida Gators. Of course, mm -hmm. they took on Norfolk State, a team that the Cinderella dust or the magic dust, whatever you say, kind of rubbed off today, a dose of reality, the Gators came out and played. Absolutely, you know, it was great to see Kenny Boynton step up and make shots for them. One of the things about Florida with their four guard offense, they do a great job of putting pressure on you and being able to shoot the three-point shot. And once again, like I said earlier, Sam, it comes down to making shots at the end of the day. Making shots indeed. You look at this team here, now you see the Gators. Team. What about this particular Florida team? Because you were there doing sometimes people like Al Horford and Joachim Noah. I think one of the things that really sticks out with this team here is how their freshman Bradley Bills really stepped up and played well for them throughout the season. But as they move forward to the Sweet 16 and having to play Marquette, they're going to have to really do a great job of neutralizing their guards, especially Jay Crowder from Marquette. All right, 84-50, the final score. Uh, Southeastern Conference being represented well there by Florida. All right, North Carolina. North Carolina got a little news tonight, but they, t uh, they beat a Creighton team. Talk about the Tar Heels and what you like about this group. You know what? I think they have depth at all three levels, starting with Kendall Marshall and his ability to distribute the rock and get it to the right people at the right time with Harrison Barnes with his ability to take you off the dribble one-on-one. -on -one. But even more importantly, having a great inside player like a Tyler Zeller, as well as a John Henson. So I think of all the teams that are left in the tournament, they're probably the deepest across the board. Coach like Roy Williams comes here to town last week and, and they lose the ACC final against the Florida State team. What does he say to his team now, you know, leaving the ACC going into the NCAA tournament? Well, it's very plain and simple. It's one and done. And with one and done, you know, if you don't play well for 40 minutes, you can end up being a story like Missouri was, as well as Duke in the first round. Or if you continue to play basketball the way that you're capable of, it's about surviving and advancing. And the news about them tonight, Kendall Marshall suffers a, a, a wrist injury. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that as far as them moving forward now? Well, one of the things I think, you know, they do not really have a suitable backup from this point forward. So you hope you can get that immobilized. And, uh, you know, their team doctor might be the most important guy here yeah. leading up. Uh, for them this upcoming week. Yeah, that's true for everybody this time of year. 87-73, the final win over Creighton as they will get to move on now. Let's talk about the Atlanta Regional now, and, and that's one of the teams that's coming up, Kentucky and Indiana, a game that we're going to get to see here, mm -hmm. a classic matchup for this time of year. Absolutely. You have two great teams that actually played each other on December 10th, and it comes down to a huge three to uh, right there at the buzzer by Christian Watford to win the game for Indiana. There's no doubt in my mind that the Kentucky fans you know, as well as the Kentucky team, remember that. I look for Kentucky to win that game in advance to the Elite Eight. What about this Indiana team? Because the Indiana people have been waiting so long, seems like, for a team like this, for this Indiana team to be back around. And they have the, the guard suffers an injury, but they're still here. They're in the Sweet 16. Well, I think one of the things you go back to is starts with Cody Zeller once again working inside back out. 
He's done a great job as a freshman to help neutralize them inside and give them a definitive post presence. And now with their guards and being able to have the freedom to play with Jordan Holmes and Christian Wofford playing, you know, like the veteran that he's playing, they're just kind of playing off of each other. Great game uh, the other night against VCU. So it's going to be probably of all the matchups, I think it's going to be the best overall matchup. All right. You like Syracuse team, Coach Beheim's squad. They're there again, and they're missing their big guy, but they're still mm -hmm. finding ways to win. Well, I think a lot of that comes down that they're a veteran team. You know, Scoop Jardine stepped up and knocked down shots. You know, you got Brandon Trish that's playing well. Donald Sutherland coming off the bench. And then their senior leader, Chris Joseph, has really stepped up and taken uh, that senior leadership role for them. All right, that's what we watch for. We watch March Madness continue. Let's talk some about the Kennesaw State program. Your first season there with the Owls in the in the A Sun mm -hmm. uh, conference that's go, go, going through a bit of a transition after this season. Absolutely. You know, we have Belmont leaving the league. Uh, you know, they're moving over to the uh, Ohio Valley. So for all of us that are returning, it is an exciting time because we all feel like that we're going to have a shot to to win the league. But we're also introducing uh, Northern Kentucky to the league. So it's going to give us a chance to broaden our horizons and get into a different media market. But, you know, at the same time, we're all looking forward to winning basketball games. And you've been busy, of course, recruiting for that class and coming in. And we got a player from the local area that people are familiar with out of Burkmar High School, Yonel Brown. Absolutely. Yonel, uh, you know, did a great job leading this team to the Sweet 16 uh, here. Uh, he ended up being the Gwinnett County Player of the Year. And one of the things about him is he is a pass first, pass second point guard. Now he does a great job of distributing the rock so the other four guys playing around him is going to enjoy it. Looking forward to him as well as the other guys we have coming in, being able to make a significant impact early for us. You want that. Thoughts about this because we cover high school basketball all the season. This is such a fertile recruiting ground. You're able to keep one of them home. What does that mean for you and for your program? Well, I think it's, it's huge for our program. And, and one of the things I always say that I want to do is I want to make sure that I cultivate the right relationships and in cultivating those relationships is making sure uh, that we find the right young men that are good character young men that come from a very competitive background that have been accustomed to winning. Those things are very valuable to me because what happens is if you have those three things, it's the sum total winning championships. Absolutely. That sounds like a good formula for success for the Owls to me. Absolutely. Coach Preston, thanks so much for coming by and talking a little March Madness with us tonight. Sam, thank you for having me. And we got something for you here. By the way, Coach Preston gets a gift card from Public Draft House, 654 Peachtree Street, Food, Spirits, and Fun. Thanks for treating our guests tonight on Sports X.